China is the world's second largest economy and has one of the most developed transport networks in the world. It has the world's largest highway networks carrying 80 million tons of freight every day. It has the world's largest high-speed rail network that connects hundreds of cities as well as a huge air transport system with 227 airports. Seven out of 10 of the world's largest ports are on China's coasts. This huge transport system is the backbone of the Chinese economy, but progress never sleeps. The network continues to develop night and day, quantitatively and qualitatively, meeting the challenge of getting people and goods around the nation. The Dagei County in Sichuan province is home to the world's largest printing house of Tibetan scriptures. They have 320,000 printing blocks accumulated over the last three centuries. The printing house reproduces 70% of the world's Tibetan classics, covering Tibetan medicine, history, and culture, which are delivered to all parts of China. Today, Master Digger is dispatching a number of these classics to Kangding. Take care on the road. Okay. The road is dangerous ahead. Please slow down. Dega is nearly 600 kilometers from Kangding, a 24-hour ride. The biggest obstacle in route is the Chola Mountains that rise to 6,168 meters above sea level. For centuries, it has been a major barrier between the Tibetan region and the rest of China. The narrow dirt road that connects this part of North Sichuan to Tibet was built over 60 years ago. It snowed over for all but two months of the year. A breakdown can cause a traffic jam, which lasts for days. It is notorious to drivers as the most dangerous road in China. When the ice and snow are heavy, there is no way for a trailer to go. If it's blocked, our oil won't get there. It will be completed soon in a few days. This struggle will soon be over. For five years, a huge project has been underway beneath the mountains. The Chola Mountain Tunnel will be the world's longest and highest road tunnel. Construction work on the high plateau is different to that on the plains. Oxygen in the air is just above 48% of normal, so workers in the tunnel can only stay an hour at most before they have to take an oxygen break. At 4,300 meter above sea level, staff turnover is very high. If it is a normal tunnel, on the plains, 200 people should be able to finish the job. But we have already employed more than 2,600 people on this project. The harsh environment puts every worker under huge pressure. The project is entering the final stage. The tunnel will be finished in a month's time.
thanks to the efforts of thousands over the past five year, it will then take just 10 minutes. to cross the mountains and to do it so in safety while sheltered from the weather. Hello, I'm here to collect mapping data on the tunnel. Okay, thank you. Today, Huang Qijin is going to be the first non-engineer to drive through the tunnel. He is driving a mapping data collecting car. Equipped with a 360 degree laser radar continuous image capturing camera and a laser radar positioning data acquisition system. This allows him to collect road information in real time. I can collect mapping data on about 300 km per day with this car. A trip usually lasts about 90 days. As he drives through the world's longest high altitude tunnel, Huang Shijin also has to cope with altitude sickness. Under 20 minutes, all the mapping information from the tunnel has been collected. Huang Qijin will continue mapping along the highways, collecting data that has never been recorded before. 2,700 kilometers away in Beijing, Huang's data from the Chola Mountains has been received. An hour later, an electronic map outlines the new road. When it opens to traffic, this new map will be sent to every mobile phone user through the internet in less than a second. China has the planet's largest highway network, where over 200 million vehicles carry 15 billion passengers and 33.6 billion tons of cargo a year. And the network is still expanding. Other bold projects, like the Chola Mountain, will open to traffic. China's highways now extend to every corner of the country. For Lu Shujie, the highways are key to his family's livelihood. Yunnan's Huaning County has a uniquely mild climate that allows it to produce the earliest mild climate citrus harvest in China. However, the fruit only remains in peak condition for a week. Before the highways open, the fruit can only be sold in surrounding cities within a few hundred kilometers. Now, with the National Highways Network, Lu Shuji is able to travel across the country in a couple of days, taking the fresh flavors of Yunnan to North and Northeast China. You have to put it down. You can rest assured once it's loaded. We often transport these. I'll trust you with it. Okay. Chuang, take a look. This leads to Yuxi. Check it out with your mobile phone. See if there is an exit. Lu's son-in-law is his driver. He has his own method, using satellite positioning. He can pick the quickest route to his destination.
you can find that too many vehicles running empty on the road, eating away the advantages of highway transportation. About 40% of the trucks in China run unloaded, which pushes up the cost of freight transportation and leads to a huge waste of energy. The city of Chengdu is an important transport hub in southwest China. In the north of the city, one smallish gas station can claim to be the most profitable in China. It serves over 2,000 trucks every day. It takes over 300 tons of fuel oil to meet the daily demand. This way, this way. Okay. Every day, about 1,700 to 2,000 lorries come to our station. A truck driver usually spends 1,500 to 2,000 yuan on average for refueling right away. At the busiest, our daily sales volume can reach 309.7 tons. The building on the other side of the wall is why trucks gather here. The freight market opens at 8 in the morning in the trading hall of Chengdu Logistics Port. It is packed with more than a thousand truck drivers speaking a multitude of different dialects. Drive over there. They'll take a picture of you, then deliver the goods to Xiangyang. Can I load today? Can you load Baymax? Everyone is trying hard to find the most favorable deal. People used to find it very hard. Today, the situation is already changing. More and more people just start with a search on their mobile phones. New technology is revolutionizing the way the transport system works. This is a flow diagram of Transfar's intelligent logistics. When a truck driver sets off from City A, he will know via an app the location of his next batch of cargo, the driver can decide if he should take the order or not. This effectively reduces the empty load rate of his truck. The technology has swiftly shown its appeal to drivers. When a truck enters the gate of the highway harbor, the vehicle's information will be sent to the back office system. The system automatically matches requirements and details of the trucks with the orders for delivery. Thus, goods are matched to suitably qualified trucks and their drivers. Meaning that each day, over 2,000 trucks no longer run empty back out of the logistics center. Today, more and more digital highway ports are being built across China. The highway network's efficiency is being continuously optimized through the use of big data technology. In the future, every delivery will be more efficient with decreased energy consumption per unit delivered. However, while highway transportation has great advantages, it also has some inherent disadvantages. Ziyang is an inland city in western China with a modest population of about 3 million. One of its main claims to fame is that it produces diesel locomotives for 24 countries around the world. For a city so far from the sea, it is a significant challenge to be able to deliver its hundreds of tons locomotives to customers who may well be on the opposite side of the globe In Yibin, 200 kilometers away, the Jinsha River and Minjiang River converge into the Yangtze River. The Great River leads all the way deep from inland China to the Pacific Ocean. The Yangtze has been a key communications corridor for thousands of years, especially for extremely heavy goods, that the cost of water transportation is 1 15th of that of highway transportation is an irreplaceable advantage. A 
first batch of nine locomotives made for Argentina have been assembled. They will travel down river to the port of Shanghai, 2,800 kilometers away. Then in a couple of weeks time, they will be transferred to a seagoing freighter. These first nine locomotives is hoped to lead to the opening up of new markets in the Americas. Safe transportation is particularly important. Highway transportation of these locomotives is very expensive and poses many problems with height and weight limits. With water transportation, these problems dissolve away. The locomotives from Xiang arrive at port. Workers hurry to hoist them on to the freighter. After a busy night, all nine locomotives have been safely stowed. The advantages of water transportation for large cargoes are very obvious, if not subject to the limitations of geography, The arid west of China has an abundance of coal. In 2016, China's coal production reached 3.36 billion tons, which accounts for more than half of the national energy supply. But most of this energy is needed in the east. To get it there is the most intricate of Chinese puzzles. The 594-kilometer Shuozhou Huanghua Railway is one of the busiest in China. Every day, 226 trains run along it in pairs. It is like an artificial canal, the main artery for China's energy transport. Shenxi in Shanxi province is the starting point of this artery of coal. Stocks from Western China gather here before being transported to east along this iron canal. Here, a total of 226 wagons are marshaled into a three kilometer long train. The 20,000 ton dead weight load requires two 9,600 kilowatts electric locomotives to get it moving. Then comes the really tricky bed. The railway east of Shenxi drops in elevation of more than 1,500 meters. The heavily loaded wagons travel downhill through tunnels and bends. The huge momentum they acquire poses a major threat to the safety of train. If the 216 wagons fail to brake correctly and in sequence on a bend in the track, there will be disastrous consequences. The secret to solving the problem lies here. Everyday Director of Technology, Chu Zhen checks the 4G transmitter stations along the Shuozhou Huanghua Railway. It's a world first in the application of this technology to heavy haul trains. The two locomotives are 1.5 kilometers apart from each other, but they have to be precisely controlled to ensure their synchronization. A tenth of a second lag could cause a major accident. In order to ensure full 4G coverage, there are 260 transmitters along the length of the line, sending a continuous stream of data 24-7. This advanced signaling technology is the key to ensuring the safe operation of this super long coal trains. It allows synchronized control over the two electric locomotives set 1.5 kilometers apart. Another heavy haul train passes safely.
Tracing recognition technology is one of China's leading edge developments. Based on image recognition and big data, it can quickly lock on to target persons being searched for. Engineers in the monitoring hall of Guiyang Public Security Bureau are commissioning a new face recognition and monitoring system. From 800 kilometers away, Chao Tao boards a train from Guangzhou to Guiyang. He needs to get to Guiyang this afternoon to direct a crucial part of the commissioning work. Chao Tao's company develops and provides facial recognition systems. This year, it decided to move its headquarters to Guiyang. Due to the rapid development of transportation in Guizhou province, Guizhou is the only province in China that is entirely mountainous. While this makes for a spectacular environment, the province has been equally notorious for its poor transportation, which have seriously impeded economic development. Guangzhou is the capital of China's powerhouse manufacturing province, Guangdong. In the past, it would take 22 hours to get to Guiyang by train. Now the journey time is just four and a half hours. Thanks to a new high-speed line connecting the two cities over 800 kilometers apart. First, the basic image information you have collected. Cao Tao makes it for his appointment in Guiyang. If we don't run the technical points, we can use the Skynet system. Every city in China now presses for its own connection to the national high-speed rail network. Besides the convenience, it will bring more development opportunities and competitive advantages. As of 2017, China has 22,000 kilometers of high-speed rail lines in full operation 60% of world total. It has cut travel times between the great conurbation from days to hours. And given rise to a flourishing economic circle around each. The Three Gorges Command Center, Haixing 98. Five days downriver from Yibin and the Argentina-bound Locos have arrived at the Three Gorges Dam. Beginning in 1994, a huge investment and 12 years of work saw the building of the world's largest dam completed. The hydroelectric plant now generates annually over 22,400,000 kilowatt hour of electricity, replacing at least 20 gigawatt level thermal power plants. The dam has raised the water level in the upper Yangtze by 113 meters, which has submerged many dangerous shoals and shallows. Allowing larger vessels to make passage there. 618, don't rush down. Stay at the anchorage for now. Wait until notice. Then I'll call the Maritime Affairs Department. Yes, back to the anchorage. All right. The traffic on the river at the dam is now 10 times what was planned for. The world's third largest river is now the world's busiest inland waterway. The huge upgrade in capacity poses a major challenge. It's no easy job for Guoyen to coordinate so many ships through the dam. She must rely on the set of five huge ship locks that she manages. This is the world's largest inland ship lock. It's 1,607 meters long and divided into five chambers with the capacity to take a maximum size vessel of 10,000 tons, up to 12, 3,000 ton cargo ships can transit the dam with a huge fall of 113 meters in each direction at the same time.
the captain is waiting for the order to pass the five locks. Transit time is four hours and longer when there is a backlog of vessels. The waiting time can be problematic for pleasure boats and emergency vessels that need to go through the dam quickly. To deal with this, the Chinese engineers have built the world's largest ship lift. It can handle vessels of up to 15,500 tons. And take them through 113 meter fall in 10 minutes. To maintain this world-class lift speed, the complexity of construction is immense. The Chinese engineers decided to use a climbing of gear rack system. Aided by gravity, the huge rack rolls up and down, lifting and dropping cargo in the 200 meter long super elevator. What's more, the use of the gravity counterweights by the engineers greatly reduces energy consumption. The ship lift along with the ship locks have greatly increased the transport capacity on the river. The Yangtze River tightly connects the 11 provinces. It passes through and forms a key economic corridor across the country. The Argentina-bound locomotives pass through the Three Gorges. They'll continue on downriver for another 10 days before reaching the Yangtze Delta, where they can be loaded on to an ocean-going freighter for the final destination. For those that don't want to spend days on the water, For swift, long-distance transportation, no other mode of transport can replace it. That is the airplane. Beijing Capital International Airport is the second busiest airport around the world. In 2016, it saw throughput of 94.39 million passengers. Flight delays have become endemic with around 400 flights each day having to be postponed. To meet the ever-growing pressure of air transport, the solution is even greater capacity. Pay attention. In the south of Beijing, Thousands of construction workers are tackling the flight delay problem. They are building a whole new super airport to serve the city. The huge steel starfish-like structure means that passengers will never have to go more than 600 meters to reach their boarding gate a larger central hall without columns is designed to maximize the public space. The innovative design brings its own challenges for the builders. Liu Yunfei climbs 20 stories to the roof every day. He is totally familiar with this huge structure. It's supposed to be joined securely to the steel beam above. Put the horizontal safety net back in place before you start. The coverage of the whole steel structure is 180,000 square meters. We only designed eight C-shaped columns for such a space. Six of them are distributed on a 180 M diameter concentric circle. The enclosed area is even bigger than the national stadium. However, the purpose of building is not to outdo Beijing's Olympic Stadium, to meet the demands of 70 million passengers per year, the design of the new airport must take into account many other factors.
The roof composed of 12,300 spherical nodes and over 60,000 bars is designed to have a natural curving appearance. Each junction between the beams and their connecting spheres is supported by a series of three-dimensional locking points. As the steel roofs are completed, attention turns to more of the internal core support points. Today it will take eight workers to maneuver this 15-ton curve tube into place. It is one of the final pieces in the 60,000-piece puzzle and will play a key part in connecting the overall roof structure. On the other side of the terminal building, the construction of the four runways carries on apace. The new airport is intended to handle 620,000 flights per year. This will put a huge stress on the runway surfaces and what lies underneath. To keep the runway from distortion, after repeated stress, the engineers have developed a new system for compacting the subsoil. This is the first time that monitoring is enabled in the whole process of compacting. We can see that he's doing the 11th strike. If all the ramming work is finished, the pit's color will turn from blue to green. Around this pit, there are some white-colored pits. These represent where the work hasn't yet started. Also, you can see the green-colored pits where the work has been completed. Beijing, the super city, is awaiting the completion of its new airport. It is expected to start handling traffic in 2019. The time pressure is on. China has the world's second largest air transport market and it is still growing at a rate of 10% per year. There are 3,000 civil aircraft flying in China and this number is expected to grow. To meet that need, China is seeking to build some of its own passenger aircraft. The C919 is undergoing testing in Pudong, Shanghai. Built to the largest international standards, it will be China's first independently developed large passenger aircraft and will have an important role in the country's future aviation market. The first successful flight test was three months ago, but there are still years of strict testing in accordance with the international airworthiness standards. Cai Jun has 11 years experience in civil aviation and is the C919 leading test pilot. Behind me is the engineering simulator of C919. It has two major roles at present. The first is to make development tests for the control system of C919. The second is to train the aircrew for the trial flights as well as other pilots. Today, Taijun is working with the engineers on simulating emergency situation that might occur in flight. The computer program simulates an aerial close encounter. While the aircraft is banking, Taijun must make a quick evasive maneuver and stir the aircraft to safety.
there will be hundreds of tests done on this simulator. But for Taijun, the real work is done in the air. To complete the airborne tests, the first requirement is an aircraft that meets the high standards for the job. Yang Chunxia from the Flight Rest Center's Test Engineering Department is installing the complex test sensors in another C919. The bare cabin is totally given over to the test equipment. To meet the requirements of the fuselage, we made it with meticulous care. It's specially designed, like a rivet. Fitted at this position, here at the tail. Now the rear heat shield is already in place. We have made many modifications at the tail because the temperature there can reach up to 450 Celsius. So when we design the cables, the crafts, the installation of sensors, and the tolerance of the sensors, we have to consider the worst case scenario and make the appropriate modifications. Thousands of sensors have been designed to be carefully installed on the aircraft. They will give the engineers immediate data throughout the flight To complete all the airworthiness tests, they need to modify at least six C919s like this, and all the aircraft will make nearly 3,000 test flights. consumption of large passenger aircraft manufactured by China is expected to reduce by at least 15%. Given its advantages, China has received orders for over 700 C919s. The C919 can be expected to provide a strong alternative for the future global aviation market. After a two-week voyage, the freighter carrying the Argentina-bound locomotives has reached Shanghai. There are many ports on China's east coast. In 2016, seven of the world's top 10 ports in terms of throughput were located in China. Among them, Shanghai Port, with a throughput of 37.13 million containers, is the biggest for seven consecutive years. Northwest of the existing port, a new wharf is being run through its operational paces. In a month's time, the wharf will see its first ship. It will then become the largest fully automated wharf as recorded anywhere in the world. Wang Yen and his team have been preparing for four years for this important moment. Before that, they still have two important tests to carry out. We call the automated wharf a ghost wharf because there won't be any operators in there. In a traditional wharf, there are drivers on the bridge cranes, drivers on the rail cranes, and drivers on the ground. But the ghost wharf will be unmanned to reduce labor costs by at least 70%. The efficiency of the whole operation should increase by about 30%. As the commissioning date is approaching, Wang's team must make another round of tests to make sure the Ghost Wharf is ready for action. Everything is controlled by computers. They will automatically operate and work with each other to move the containers The 130 Automatic Guided Vehicles, or AGVs for short, will move the containers around the wharf. They have to avoid not just collisions, but even the slightest scratch. To rest the reliability of the control system, the engineers have arranged a special test for the AGVs.
They are programmed to drive in straight lines and around bends. Within very narrow tolerances, the AGVs must control their direction in accordance with the driving conditions to turn smoothly. The result is satisfying. With that dealt with, another less obvious, but also important test is in the offing. The 130 AGVs are electric powered to minimize emissions and noise pollution, but to ensure the round the clock operation of these vehicles that weigh many tons, the reliability of their power supply is essential. Good, the AGV has come in. Pay attention to that. Disconnect the battery circuit. Prepare for the automatic battery replacement. The staff in the battery replacement station are carefully observing the process of automatic battery replacement on an AGV. This is the only AGV automatic battery replacement station in Asia. It takes just six minutes to replace the battery. By the end of 2017, Yangshan Port's automated wharf will usher in the world's super freighters and Shanghai Port's container throughput will reach 10% of the entire world total. Upgraded technology has led to an overall improvement in Chinese port operations. At the same time, this technological change is also impacting the country's overall transportation system. Glass curtain walls are being installed in Beijing's new airport. The main building is about to be completed. Forty meters below the height of the new roof, the construction of another super traffic system has also entered a critical stage. You go to the B21 to set up the instrument. Lin, go to the B22 for backsight. Set that mirror's height at 1.5 meters. The engineers are carrying out surveying work before laying the tracks for a railway system. Composed of five lines and 16 platforms, it is equivalent to the central station of a large city it will also house the world's first high-speed railway station beneath an airport terminal. It allows passengers to transfer freely, quickly and conveniently among multiple transport systems. But there is a problem. In this ingenious plan... How much time do you need? More than 20 minutes. Finish at 3.45. Okay. The orange section is the shock insulation support, specially designed for this terminal. The terminal has a layer of shock isolation. Below the ground, there are altogether 1,152 shock insulators underneath the terminal buildings. We have five tracks. The westernmost one is a high-speed rail, where the speed can be up to 300 km per hour if the train isn't stopping. This can make for high-frequency vibrations, which could have an impact on the structures above. The problem is to be solved by shock insulation technology. It is composed of a layer of natural rubber and a layer of steel. Rubber provides ductility. Steel plate ensures the bearing capacity. In this way, it is not only able to bear the weight, but also relatively flexible. The amount of deformation in our design can reach 660 millimeter. A total of 1,152 shock insulators will quietly support the huge terminal building. Multiple means of transportation are neatly integrated to give a play to their respective advantages.
from point-to-point -point road traffic to water transportation for large cargoes, from high-speed rail to the aviation of the future. New technology is allowing each means of transport to handle even greater demands for their use. In the future, high integration of these transportation systems will achieve another new breakthrough, the high efficiency and low energy consumption brought by combined transportation will transport China into a whole new era of development.